Harley Davidson is recalling more than a quarter million motorcycles worldwide because of potential brake failure. Ben Jordan live at Milwaukee Harley Davidson with the issue behind the recall. Ben. Charles and Shannon, this recall includes 30 different models between 2008 and 2011. This dealership says the trouble lies within the brake fluid. It may not be riding season just yet, but before Harley-Davidson owners fire up their engines, they may want to have a service check. Obviously, the most important things on your motorcycle is going to be the brakes and tires, <laughs> so you want to make sure you maintain those. Milwaukee Harley-Davidson general manager Goran Zadrima says this brake fluid recall is more of an operator issue than a manufacturer error. I can't really see why it's Harley's uh, uh, you know, recall, but I think Harley's all about taking care of our riders. Motorcycle owners who haven't replaced their brake fluid fluid every two years as advised could face life-threatening consequences if their brakes give out. The chances of a uh, fluid getting thicker and seizing is, is there. The U.S. government opened an investigation into the issue in 2016 after dozens of complaints and a few crashes. While manufacturer recalls are nothing new, this one comes at a particularly bad time for Harley-Davidson. <laughs> Just last week, the company announced the closure of its Kansas City plant to cut costs after dwindling sales. Would you consider this to be another blow to Harley's image? Not really. I mean, recalls happen all the time to any manufacturer. And this recall takes about an hour to fix. This dealership already reached out to all of its affected customers. They even offered to pick up and drop off your ride for free. Live in Milwaukee, Ben Jordan, today's TMJ4. Appreciate the update, Ben. Thanks. It's the Rick Rack strapless baggage system. Oh, yeah. Once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back. The ultimate motorcycle luggage rack solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawabuddingbugger.com forward slash store and get hooked up now. Hey, Bikeaholic, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley-Davidson motorcycle, affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. These guys ride and support riders just like you. Head over there, lawabuddingbugger.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Ciro 3D products. Oscar's laughing. He's in the, he's on the mic with me. He's laughing at his, at your Rick Rack. You couldn't stop. You didn't know that was coming, did you? Do you want to hear it again? You didn't know we were going to pull that out of audio, did you? I get the Rick Rack strapless baggage system. Oh, one more time. It's the Rick Rack strapless baggage system. <laughs> Oh, that's all I you, I forgot Oscar. all about that. Yeah, well, nothing. When you record your voice with us, Matt, <laughs> Matt, the producer, can pull out anything. And I told him as soon as we did that, we have one for Rick, too. I, uh, we I have, remember now. Rick did a couple of them. Yeah, he did he a did. country version. Yeah. They're hilarious, <laughs> they dude. Hilarious. We hadn't played yours yet, though. So, oh, you got to check out this intro, dude. This is one of our new intros from patron member Pablo Calcerata. <laughs> You like it? Yeah. That's <laughs> badass, huh? That is badass. That is the community, guys. That's the community, Law Abiding Biker community. Pablo Calcerata making us tunes. He's got the setup, and I love this one. It's very cool. At any rate, welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the 99%. That's right, large and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history. That's right. By listening to this very podcast, you are part of what we call the biker revolution. Mm -hmm. It makes you makes you sound better looking too by listening. True. It goes through your ears, into your face, down into your abs, and everything. Right. You just about knocked over the whole table. Oh, yeah. We do have just one question for you. What are you waiting for, Mike? Alex, mount up. Let us take you on another wild ass ride. Welcome back. That's right. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast and your... Oh, high tech redneck. There you go. Oh, I Way to be right on cue, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like usual, it's what I expect. Oh, I love trash. That's right. Oscar in the house. It is just me and Oscar in the house today. Yeah. And uh, I do heavily apologize if our audio sounds uh, not as professional as it usually does, um, I will just tell you right up front, 
that uh, we are in transition. You may get a couple episodes, unfortunately, like this, uh, just because it is what it is. We're in a we're in between the new studio, and I know you guys will understand, and you'll bear with us uh, with all of that. Um, let me check right there. But yeah, we're in a it, we're in transition between the old bonus room. We're trying to move out of my home, the garage, and into um, into the new shop and studio, but we still have stuff to do and I'm missing a whole bunch of components and we're getting a reverb in the temporary room we're using here. But nonetheless, I know you guys will understand it's, if it's your first time listening, trust me, our audio is way, way stellar audio. We've had compliments on it before and I'm not happy with this, but, um, we didn't want to not uh, get content out to you guys um, by taking too big of a break. And uh, so for you guys, I set up a temporary table. We don't have all our equipment. So it's I, uh, I almost knocked it over. You already, he yeah. almost knocked the mixer over and everything. And uh, <laughs> the sound would have been really bad then. Yeah, it would have. That's no, okay though. Oh, test, test. So yeah, it's just, it's not, it's okay. I just got to get over it and just go on with the show because yeah. what I'm hearing back in my ears, I'm not happy with. And it's still better than a lot of podcasts out there, trust me. But uh, we're, you're, you're fixating a little bit. I am fixating. I'll, I'll come over there and smack the crap out of here. I need a sip of beer. You need more than a sip. Mm. You maybe need a box, a box or a bucket. Definitely. <laughs> so just yeah, guys. That's all I ask is if it's your first time listening, don't go away. Our audio is is way way better than this. So um, what's the show about? Yeah, go ahead, Oscar. It's about the content. I guess to a certain extent. <laughs> but even though the contents, if it's really horrible, but again, I don't think it's really horrible. So yeah, but like if you see a really ugly smart woman, you'll listen yeah. to her for okay. You might not. I don't know. Maybe I don't know where I was going with that. I, I was trying to make a euphemism or a morphism or uh, something, something like that. Uh, yes. I don't know. I got nothing. Oscar is awesome because he's been in here all day. Um, what's this about? This particular episode. Let me just tell you guys up front. Um, it's going to be all about the main topic is. What you heard up front in the YouTube video, hopefully that was uh, informative to you guys, but um, the main topic is Harley Voluntarily Brake System Recall. We filmed a video today for you guys. We've been in the shop all day, um, again, trying to continue content um, uh, and try not to take a break while we're in transition here, but we, we got it filmed. It will come out on our YouTube channel. Make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. We would really, really appreciate that. Uh, uh, because it helps uh, bump us up in the rankings and more bikers can find us around the world by subscribing and then we can help more bikers worldwide. But yep, it's all about what we filmed and that is the uh, flushing, um, how to do this project, how to flush your uh, brake system. Do you, um, um, do you want to see my nipples? I do not. You're a little downtrodden. Maybe if you look at them, you'll laugh my a little. Vo- oh, hang on a sec. <laughs> test, test. <laughs> Oh, I think, see why I sounded so bad? The why? the button, test, test. The testicle button. The, uh, oh. let me, sorry, test, test, test. Yeah, dude. I think that, see, when I moved all this stuff, dude, buttons got bumped. Hit. Yeah. And see how hot I was coming in? I don't Listen know. to this, test, test. That's oh. way too hot. Test, test, test. Mm. I was coming in way too hot. Let me get back, that back to a level it's supposed to be. Test, test, test. That's you. So when you say coming in Test. hot, now I know. Oh, see how different you're, that is. You're gonna have your clothes on, dude. <laughs> Should we start killing, over? No, or just keep going. You're oh, killing me! Come on. I know my audience will you're, understand. They, you, okay. Yeah. See, buttons got moved, and I just—it's hard yeah. to get everything dialed back in. I had this it is so like perfect in a the live, old studio, non-live version. It's it like is. behind the scenes, but true. So it's it's good. Sorry, Matt, about that. Producer, he'll uh, figure that out. I was coming in way hot. That's. A whole bunch better. I'm going to use that phrase like four more times during this podcast. What coming in hot? Coming in hot. I'm coming I'm in, coming hot. in hot. Um, but back to back to the subject matter. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we did in the shop. Um, is 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 blood those brakes and and got all that stuff done. And of course, like I say, it's going to come out. You don't need to take your bike to the dealership. I think as we're going to discuss here today. Yeah. Um, start we'll, at the beginning. Yeah. Well, let's start at the beginning. So first, I want to know real quick. Um, I know I've got you for a limited time, Oscar, on this Saturday uh, since we spent all day, but. Tell us a little bit about, I want to hear uh, about your BMW. Uh, so, uh, so we're both, uh, the, those of you that uh, that know uh, Oscar and I are both uh, full-time uh, Leo, uh, law enforcement motorcycle, officers assigned to motorcycle units. And uh, we ride Hardy Davidson um, Electric Glides. His uh, agency chose to go. They have been riding some Honda STs and 
they're going to a BMW we've talked about in the past. And so I just want to get an update because it's kind of a funny story about how they lost your bikes and we're not dogging uh, BMW. We're just tell us, I the, don't to just give us the kind of story, how this has went. You've been riding your crappy old burned <laughs> out Honda. ST Honda because they're just old and, and they're breaking beat up. down. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. And so when we had this conversation or maybe Jimmy and I did back in like January, we ordered them in like mid December. And so they were prep, they were set to be here like mid February to be put together so that we had planned on starting to ride March 1st if there was no snow. Well, let's see, we rode them back from Tacoma to what, three days ago? So obviously they were not here in February. And so we had emailed our, our fleet guys emailing BMW going, Hey, you know, our bikes are supposed to be here. And they're like, uh, we don't know where they are, but they're on a boat or something coming they're from, because they, they come from Germany, now right? This they is, came this from is Berlin. The part, this is the interesting part. And again, this isn't a dog on BMW. Um, it's just the true story. And I think you bikers out there will find it interesting. This is your first, your agency's first dealing with, with switching BMW. to BMWs. And so you yeah. want it to be a good experience. You would we think. do. And we for, right. apparently forged the state contract. So we're kind of, we kind of forged some new ground. So the rest of the state can piggyback off, off of the contract we use. Oh, really? There is, okay. you know, that's more, a little more complicated, but the short version is, yeah, Hey, we're kind of forging ahead. And then here, <laughs> one of the emails is like, yeah, we don't know. They're somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> Dude. I, we waited forever. And, and then we just got an email randomly. Hey, they're here. Uh, come get them. How? So, <laughs> so we yeah, what, we're, we're looking at here in March. So they lost them for over a month. They were somewhere for a month. I, I, I were they seeing, on a boat somewhere? I I never found out where they I actually thought that's were. Where it was. I, I well, they had to have been on a boat because how else would they have gotten here? Yeah, true. Paddleboard. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Over okay. the ocean. So that that was just they come from Berlin. I mean, that was just the rumors. Yeah, they're stuck on a boat somewhere. Yeah, okay. We thought maybe they were was, stuck in customs in North Korea or. They went to Cuba instead. I don't know where they went, but they, right. they finally showed up like, I don't know, almost two months behind schedule. And so now they're here. So we went and, and got them in, in Fife and, and rode them home. And man, they are fun and fast. Yes. And uh, they've got different riding modes and they just, uh, it's a fun bike. It's a lot of fun on the high speed corners and the twisties. They're fun. Yeah. They're fun. And we've talked about that in the past, me and Oscar. Of course, Oscar loves his Harley Davidson. And, uh, you know, here's the deal. You know, a lot of people ask, what do I want to ride? Me personally? Well, I'm lucky. Um, and I have nothing against BMW. It's just me personally. It's my personal opinion. In the, in the past, I've said it is I just like the looks of the Harleys for public relations. A lot of what I do is PR stuff along with traffic stuff. And, you know, and I just love riding Harley Davidson motorcycles. Um, but here's the deal if for whatever reason in two years, my agency got a new chief and they said, Hey, metric, I don't like Harleys and I'm going to make you ride a BMW. I'm still going to ride the BMW because I'm still riding a motorcycle and getting paid. And that's kind of where Oscar is. Yeah. Um, and not that the BMW isn't a great bike for police work. I'm not saying that I just, for, for what I do in a city environment, I just really, really don't want to get rid of a uh, Harley Davidson. Um, but you know, the BMW is out in the County, um, and, and, and interstates and things. Yeah. They, you know, they go, but with the new Milwaukee eight, you know, here's the deal. Here's an interesting point. Cause we go to different schools, Oscar and I different motorcycle. And we see a lot of different motorcycle mm -hmm. police officers and, you know, some of the guys, you know, uh, here's the deal. Okay. I digress mm -hmm. because I'm going to get way off track. Here's the deal. <laughs> a lot of the guys, you know, will some of the guys will say, Oh, this BMW does 160 miles an hour. Okay. And here's, here's what I tell them. Number one, that's more power than you need. Number two, if you're doing 160, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. Cause you know what I mean? So the Harley um, with the Milwaukee eight does everything that you would need. And if you're doing anything more than that, you might want to check yourself really quick before you become a crippled or dead law enforcement it's, motorcycle officer. It, and so I don't like it's those, not, you know? They, yeah. And it's, so we, um, my riding partner, Wes and I were talking about that because, you know, we rode them home. <coughs> And we pushed them a little bit on a couple of roads, but we never went over a hundred. And uh, like a lot of our county roads aren't built for motorcycles to go over a hundred. Right. So it's not about the top speed, but they go from 20 to 70 really fast. Mm -hmm. And so what I've noticed is turning on cars. I mean, we didn't get a lot of time with them, but even the Hondas versus the Harleys downshifting and turning um, with the power band, the way the BMWs and some of the metric bikes are set up, I can actually stay in a gear higher if I don't have to make a real sharp turn and I can get to cars faster. So in the County, when a car passes me at 60 miles an hour or let's say 80 and a 50, 
and I have to catch up to it. That car is already going. So when I'm down, I get that braking right. and turning. That car is going 80 miles an hour away from me to catch up to it. Right. When there's no stoplights for 20 miles. Yeah, it depends on the environment. I agree. <laughs> that so for us in the county now, the Harley obviously is a lot more comfortable for sure. And so you know, you and I were talking about that when we were kind of wrenching. And there's like. I wouldn't trade my Harley as a personal bike because I can ride it eight or 900 miles a day. Mm-hmm. The BMW was fine. It was way more comfortable than the ST, but- Oh, it is, huh? Good. Oh, yeah. 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 I couldn't ride the ST like more than 50 miles before I have to stop. I remember you telling me that. The BMW is good. I mean, we rode a couple hundred miles home and, and I wasn't sore. So it was fine, but though the seating is still a little more forward and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it. For me, I wouldn't make it a personal bike. Right. Plus, where do we- you know, like we went to advanced and that would, uh, advanced, that yeah, police motor school, right. Would be fun. It's going to be fun on yeah. BMW because yeah. that up that track, the corners and stuff, man, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, they are. And so that was my only point is, and you know, I get what you're saying, using them for that purpose, but I'm just saying some of them are like, you know, it can do this and do, yeah. dude, you're not really going to be doing that. And if you are, you know, you know, yeah. it, you know, that, that was my only point on it. You know, yeah, yeah that's great. Not. I mean, you can have a bike that goes 300. That's great. It brag about it. Sense, if you're right? doing 300, you've got a death wish, you know? So it's at some point there's a diminishing, diminishing return of, of how f- it's not a big deal to me on how fast the bike goes, you know? And no. some guys tout that and I'm like, really, that well, doesn't matter to me. Top speed's only 135. Right. Is that what it is? Yeah. On those? It's okay, governed, yeah. They're governed at 135. And I, I, even on the Honda, I've never been over, we got into one car chase that, I mean, it was a serious, like the mm-hmm. dude was wanted for attempted murder. And I think I hit 110. Right. That's it. Because you know what? If I crash and die, I don't catch the guy, then it's no point in chasing him. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I get that. I'm with you. There's a diminishing return. Absolutely. Yeah. But the zero, but the zero to 60 is. That's nice. I wasn't talking about the quick getting there. I was talking about. They always talk. You hear guys, the overall speed. That means nothing to me. Me, Right. means nothing to me. Yeah. No one cares. So I, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to put the Milwaukee and the BMW side by side. Oh, we will. And do, we were talking about building the course where, what, the, like the one you made last, the practice one you mm-hmm, made with mm-hmm. that U-turn. Right. That'd be interesting to time some of those. Yep. I and, agree. And go, you know, out of that corner, like you're stopping a car and, and With see. the brake and with the turn and with, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like Put apples that. to apples and, and see, but it's got a lot of other nice, nice features. It's got a rain setting, so it detects rear wheel slip in the rain. It'll, right. Like a car, it'll break the rear a little bit. Um, we rode uh, kind of the back way around Cleelum and I rode in some gravel. And I hit the gas really hard trying to spin the rear tire and I could actually feel the traction control kick in, which is pretty cool. Right, My yeah. Harley doesn't have anything like that. Right. Um, and then it's got a dynamic setting. So it adjust, so it's got self-adjusting suspension. So you can make it softer, firmer, depending on what you're doing with it. If you're cornering hard, you, a little harder, so you keep the bike up. But if you're doing cruising, you can set it a little softer so the bike rides a little easier. Interesting. Like that's pretty freaking cool. So, so this is what I'm interested in. Um, and we'll get into our main topic here, guys, but I wanted to give you a little teaser. I'm going to get let Oscar have some time. I'm getting a brand new Milwaukee 8 right now. So mm-hmm. me and me and uh, I'm getting an Electroglide, a police Electroglide Milwaukee 8. I just went down and stripped it down um, a couple of our new bikes uh, for the department so that the radio guys, I tore fairings off in gas tanks and everything and put it all aside so they can get in there and do that. Mine's getting prepared. Oscars is getting prepared. Yes. So in the future, you guys can look forward to those podcasts. That's just a little teaser. We're going to give you a full review of the new, uh, my police, uh, electric glide Milwaukee 2018. I'll be doing a full review of that and my thoughts on it as a police bike versus my current 2013 electric glide and what I like better and maybe what I like worse about it. Um, and then Oscar, I'll have him back and that'll be an upcoming after we give him some time on the bike. Yeah. And I want to do a full, um, awesome. I'll come in and just ask you questions and you sure. can just spew stuff like that. Like it has traction control. I don't like this. I do like this. It's a BMW. What? I forget the R- model. It's a RTP for RTP for police 1200. Okay. It's a boxer. Is there a similar though? Uh, yeah, I'm not RT. Fa- so there it's similar mm-hmm. to the, but civilian version, it's just they put a P on it for police. It's because yes. it comes with lights. Because it comes with lights and it's wired. Emergency lights and stuff. Like the, I think the radio, some of the connections are there already. And gotcha. It comes with some options that you would probably, I think, I think your chief was saying it already comes with some options that you would pay for. Like you would have to pick and choose on the civilian RT. But we, but they're expensive. I mean, you know, they're not as expensive as the Harley. But anyway, it comes with some stuff that the RT you might have to pay for. Right. When you, right. If you buy a base model RT, you start adding stuff like a car. So I, right. we get that stuff. So there you go. We'll get a full review and not to focus in, but now that I got the levels right, 
we're not getting that. It yeah, actually so. sounds good in this room. It, it sounds it fine. Was, it was that one setting. Yeah. So sorry about that at the beginning, guys. Um, but it is what it is. We just wanted to show you. We didn't want to start over. So yeah, and we wanted to show you crappy audio for a sec. So then, oh, we so you can appreciate. The, the, oh yeah, the oh, yeah. better audio. It'll like just this. melt you. You fall on the floor probably. Yeah, let's go to sleep. I was just, worried at um, first. I was like, this room, it's got stuff. Anyways, you kind of right. sound like Barry White right now. I'm, I'm, Do I? Yeah, I'm, yeah, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. What was the phrase I went? Oh, you're coming in kind of hot, right? Coming in kind of uh, hot, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know what? This oh. episode sponsored by the following. That's right. Patrons, Brad Johnson of Redmond, Oregon, top tier. James Beard. Do you have it up? Yeah. If you don't, uh, James yeah. Beard of Weston, West Virginia. John Herzog of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Nelson Sanchez of Lake Worth, Florida. Cameron Tolls of Thorold, Ontario, Canada. Rhett Randall of Tyatton, Washington. Can you Rhett? believe that? Wow, that's awesome. Do you have the last three? Yep. I did. Billy Ru- Russo, or Russo of Floral Park, New York, Edward Claiborne of Denver, Colorado, and Kevin Newman of Ennis, Texas. Thank you so much. Lawabidingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. P A T R E O N is uh, how you get over there, guys. Pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No risk to you because you can put a monthly cap so you don't go over the family budget. There are benefits. T shirt stickers. Get into that booming private Facebook group. We want to get to know you better up to. Um, our top tier patrons uh, get access to our premium for purchase videos up on request. And so the patron community is still growing and we want to have you involved. There's no better time as uh, we're trying to move into the new studio and there's just a lot of things, different things that we couldn't afford up front. We're not, we're still very happy as we're making the transition, but uh, there are still a lot of things that need to be done. So um, part of those patron funds, let us know uh, what we can provide to you guys and and kind of how we can build going into the future. So please get hooked up. So let's move into our main topic as we move right along. And this is uh, what we talked about. So Hardy Davidson, let me start with this and talk about a little bit, Oscar, and then we'll go into the actual process. Sound good? Yeah. So no matter your riding style, you still need to have your brake fluid changed every two years. This is per Harley. And this was a non, or this was a voluntarily recall. This doesn't just affect Harley guys. That's one thing I want to say up front. This is bull crap, really. Uh, it's motorcycle brake fluid. Fluid Hondas and different motorcycles use dot four brake fluid too. They have the same brake systems, the same brake components. It brakes are brakes. Okay, Harley just did the thing where they were, there was a couple reports of some guys getting some brake fade and and they never could tie it that it actually caused an accident. And Harley, honestly, on this one, stepped up to the plate. I think. And did the right thing and said, okay, listen, you know, you need to do it in your Honda too. You need to do it in your BMW too. You know, the same types of processes and breakdown of brake fluid happen in these motorcycles there. They, they, you know, the, the components get really hot and all that kind of stuff. So Hardy just said, listen, we'll replace it if you want. And then you need to do it every two years after that. But this first one is kind of on us. We'll do it for you. That's a big step, a big expense for Hardy Davidson. It's not a recall. It's a voluntary thing. They're recommending that you do it. Um, and they recommend that you do it regardless of riding or not riding. So many Hardy Davidson motorcycles that use dot for brake fluid. As the fluid ages, its chemical properties deteriorate and it absorbs water. Um, this charge this changes the physical properties of the dot four brake fluid, which can lead to brake performance issues, including softer spongy brakes. Left unchanged long enough, the brake fluid could eventually deteriorate so much that there could be loss of either front or rear braking. Heat happens, guys. Brakes can develop a significant amount of heat, particularly when used repeatedly. Consequently, another consideration for brake brake fluid is its boiling port boiling point, which can affect by uh, be affected by the amount of water content absorbed by the fluid. Dot four brake fluid can absorb water because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, less than half the temperature of brake fluid. Um, any water uh, in the brake fluid dramatically reduces its boiling point. However, boiling converts any water in the fluid to gas. And because gas is more compressible than liquid, when brake fluid boils, the brake lever and pedal can start to feel soft, requiring the rider to pump the brakes to create sufficient pressure to slow the motorcycle. This chemical deterioration and absorption of water changes the physical properties of the dot four brake fluid, which can lead to brake performance issues, including loss of either front or rear braking. Change it. Besides changing the fluid every two years, there's a few other instances that brake fluid, any type, not just dot four, should be replaced. After the brake line, master cylinder caliper has been disassembled. Whenever the brake level or pedal seems spongy, anytime the brake system has been operated uh, in a spongy state caused by boiling fluid, even if operation has returned to normal. Um, 
So factory trained service technicians, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> factory trained service technicians at Hardy Davidson have the tools and knowledge. Oh, so does the Law Abiding Biker Studio. Yes, we do. And our patrons and all our members and community out there, they have the knowledge to replace your brake fluid as recommended. And if you don't have the knowledge after this podcast, and especially once we put the free tutorial video out on our YouTube channel, you too will have the knowledge and tools that you need to do this lickety freaking split. If they ever find your motorcycle's brake fluid has a 3.7 or higher water content by volume, they'll recommend changing it, even if it's been less than two years since your last brake fluid change. As brake fluid can be corrosive to paint, service technicians and Oscar and Ryan <laughs> take great care to protect all of your motorcycle finishes in the case of splash or spill. So basically what they're saying is the Hardy Davidson mechanics put a fucking blanket on your tank. We used, we used a, 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 a oh, yeah, custom <laughs> cover. <laughs> it was an old t-shirt, but it actually fit perfectly like a glove. This is just, yeah, it did like a glove. <laughs> this is just a total selling point. Oh, and they, they take special precautions. Yeah. No, I've seen them. They put a blanket on it. Oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> Find an HD dealer or service center today and make your next appointment to keep your Hardy Davidson motorcycle. Maintain factory specifications. Better yet, find the Law Abiding Biker YouTube channel and podcast and do the shit yourself. And then you don't have to rely on a dealership to do it and you'll have the satisfaction. And it is so satisfying what me and Oscar did today. Yeah. Um, working together, uh, changing out the brake fluid and BS in, in the shop and talking, talking motorcycles and talking life and filming. Of course we're filming, but in between that, eating a burger together. Donut too. You donut. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't have the donut, but Oscar did. He can't resist food. I, period. That's true. My yeah. wife came with donuts. My donut's still sitting there. You'll uh, eat it before uh, you leave. I probably will. You yeah. will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. <laughs> pretty standard around here. Pretty standard for Oscar. I didn't get this skinny for a reason. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, so there you go. So let's talk about, now I've got a couple other articles. Let's, before we dive into the process, let me see if anything, um, well, and some of the audience, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Jump th in anytime. This bro. kicked off quite a while ago. Cause I got a letter from Harley. So, all right, fine. We're, we're pretty, we're maintenance heavy, like, but not over the top too much. Like, you know, you, you maintenance your bike when it needs maintenance and we don't generally do stuff we don't need to do, but I, so, but I'd really neglected this. And so what in like maybe January, I got a letter from Harley that said, Hey, by the way, January 18. I don't remember. I, it was just, it was, well, in, it would have been January just, 17, oh, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah. It was 2018. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, said, Hey, by the way, you should have changed your brake fluid every couple of years. And then went to outline, went on to outline exactly what you just read. Basically the right. brake fluid breaks down, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, Oh, well, okay. I've never done that. But, uh, so that kind of kicked this thing off. Like, Hey, you know, I got this letter. I told you, I got this letter. Maybe we should give this a shot. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're and right. then I, you told me about the recall. I'm like, Oh, that's kind of cool that Harley would do that. The I didn't know that. Recall. Yes. We're calling it a recall, but it's not really. It's a, yeah, they're basically offering a kickoff free service. Correct. Like, hey, we'll do it if for you. If you have it done it in two years, we'll yeah. do it for free the first time and get you on the two year plan. And then we'll charge you every two years. Right. And it's, yeah. Except they're not going to because they're going to watch our video. Yeah. Go wait. Ahead. So charge, you can charge yourself. Just take money from your left hand and put it in your right hand. There you go. Yeah. That amount of money. Ironically enough, uh, so after I got the letter, maybe three weeks later, I was servicing my wife's Honda Pilot. Yeah, we have a Honda Pilot too. Yeah, and the Pilot. I was in there buying an air filter because I wanted to try a dealership air filter. And the guy's like, hey, your Pilot's do up for brake fluid exchange, which is what we did today on the bike. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, you every three years, Honda recommends that you exchange your brake fluid. And he gave me the same basic spiel that you just read. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, so it's not just Harley. It's not, it's it's a, it's it, a brake thing. It's it brakes. is. That's what, you know, I heard some, you know, you hear some stuff or you hear forums or whatever. Right. And it's like, okay, guys, this is not a Harley issue. Even Harley said it's not it, you, but it's any, any motorcycle system, brake fluid it's system. It's any can, vehicle. Any vehicle. They, it absorbs moisture. And, and so what did we come up with? Well, we were, we were talking, it was about, an inter, a little bit interesting conversation about yeah. why, because some cars you're like never flush. Some people never you're do You're supposed it, to, but they don't. But they don't. And they never have brake problems. Correct. And so why does a motorcycle absorb more fluid? We never really came up to that answer, didn't. other than it's all outside lines. And, and it's way your smaller, right? Your reservoir sits up in the weather. It's way smaller system. So it may be the amount of moisture yeah. that absorbs affects the system overall more because it's a smaller system. You know, yeah, right. honestly, we don't have the answer to that. But no. So if someone does let us know. I mean, Clearly, we, it affects moisture because we tested. Holy cow, ours. that was awesome. So let me look here um, real quick while I got the comp computer up. Let's do, what would that be? Brake moisture 
Uh, I bought one of these a while ago. And in fact, in the new, in our Milwaukee 8, uh, our, our premium Milwaukee 8 video, um, our, our maintenance video, you can get that. I'll put it in the show notes. Let me uh, make a note. Nope, I got to take the little, see, these are even brand new pins, dude. Oh. Ooh. Mill 8 maintenance vid. Um, I'll put that in the show notes, but uh, I believe it's just lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash Milwaukee uh, hyphen 8 um, dash 8. I should say, um, we, but they, they recommend it in the service manuals for 17 and on, I think anything with the Milwaukee eight. And they're saying that in your owner's manual that you need the moisture tester because they want you every time you service it to test the moisture of your brake fluid. So I went and bought one and, uh, I will put it in the show notes, the one that I bought and I'm looking here and the one I bought is on, uh, I don't recommend Amazon for everything. Uh, but for this, I believe it's right there. Anyways, it's going to cost you about $10. It just looks like a pen and it has two little metal probes and it has some lights on the side with percentage values. And you just dip it in and push the button and there you go. It gives you, you the moisture level. And you have to go deep to get it wet. You do. Yeah, and we found that out. Dude, if, that just went. Uh, no, 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 it did. You can't let that go. No, I was going to. What is? Wrong? I was going to capitalize on it, but you screwed it up. You, oh, for I can't believe that just happened. I would, no, never mind. It's now we funny need now. to start over. I was totally. I <laughs> dude, you should have heard what I was going to say. <laughs> okay, dude, let me no, hear it. No, no, no come on, gonna, let's do I, it. No, I can't do it now. Oh. So I'm going so to. Yeah, I was going to totally build, and we were going to go somewhere, but you, you didn't think I got it. <laughs> Um, yeah, but all jokes aside, you do need to make sure you put it in the fluid, get it down in there pretty deep and, uh, you, and then take a reading. Don't just barely, you know, just put it on the top. You know, we did I mean, put it right on the top. You know, if you're going to slip it in, slip it in <laughs> deep and <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be way too dry on the top. You won't get oh the- my God. <laughs> done. Okay. Done. But stop. That's true. Right. We did that. We didn't put it in far enough. Uh, we do, it's true. It is. So make sure you do that. Um, we do show it in the Milwaukee eight maintenance video to test that. Um, and I forget what the owner's manual said. That article said 3.7, but they were saying in the, I believe in the owner's manual, if I recollect, right, it's anything more than 2%. You want to change it. I would go more with the 2%, but they said they tested 3.7. The tester shows over three is not good. Is that what it says? Okay. So maybe that's what the book said. So over three, over uh, three. Yeah. And they did 3.7. So, okay. It's over three. Mine was. We're general rule, yeah. Right before we go, where ours was general rule, anything over three percent. I think yes, um, I think that's what the tester was. And again, um, do you want to go get it? Yeah, let me go get it. He's going to run in the shop and go get it. So I will again link to this in the show notes, guys, of the exact tester we used. Um, but while he's getting that, essentially, um, the other thing is if you just want to change it every two years, that's fine too. Instead of worrying about testing, and that's what they say is if you just if you're changing it every two years, either you don't really need a tester or even every year, um, you know, brake fluid is cheap. You're talking for one yeah, to bleed your front and back. It's going to take you what a 16 ounce. No, it was 12 or it's 12. It's only yeah. going to take you a 12 ounce bottle. And that's like six bucks. We used Amsoil dot uh, three, dot three, three, four. four. Yeah. It's for both. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the, so he's got it in his hand. He's got the, uh, it calls it. Uh, it does look like a, something you would insert in, something moist. I thought that's why the, when I, before I got here, it <laughs> it's was, true. Oh yeah. It's a prostate tester. Did, oh. you, did you sniff that? Take a sniff. <laughs> I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> Go. What's Over it say? 2%. See, I thought so. So, well, I mean in the 2% range. So if I got up to three, I'd replace it. Yes. If it read just two, you're golden. You're golden. And that's, I think what, uh, I read on Brian's bike when we did it, his 2017 mil eight. Uh, Milwaukee eight it seems like it was right at 2% or 1%. But yeah, if you get to three, it's time to think about changing it. And, and these meters are very handy. Go ahead. We verified it too. So we did, you know, old fluid and new fluid. We did. We verified. So we know the meter works and it worked. It, it read should. zero on the new fluid. It did. Absolutely yep. zero. So that's Absolutely. pretty cool. And yep. over, so mine read what? Over four, over 4%. I had never changed it. And it's the bike's almost five years old. So me and Oscar. Yes. Right, both our bikes are the same. I mean, same I bought mine gear. in late 2013 because mine's a 14. Right, I bought mine in May or June of 13, and it's a 13. It's a 13. Yep. So, yeah. So it had never been changed. Mine had never been changed. Uh, we did Oscars on film, and then we just did mine because it needed to be done. Yeah. So, cool. all right. So the meter is the first thing I want to talk about. All right, and uh, let me get this up here, Oscar. You guys are going to find this very interesting. Let's see. Bear with me. Standing by. 
I'm bringing that up. Okay, good. So the other, anything else about that tool or moisture? I, this is pretty cool. What like, are, oh yeah. We, so we tested both of ours. Tell them what ours tested at. Oh, over 4%. Which is like look, bad. Like it doesn't light up anymore. Yeah. It like actually all shocked the lights me. <laughs> yeah. It shocked me. And then it, it fell on the floor and it rolled away. Right. It was so bad. Did it play this? Oh, <laughs> you funny. It plays a little tune you know if you're, what? if you're over, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but here's the other thing that you'll want to get now and jump in anytime, Oscar, you can do, and let's, let's, let's do this myth. ABS oh. breaks. We oh, yes, the get myth. emails on ABS breaks constantly. And we love the community. And so I'm not talking bad about that, but we want to get the word out there to everybody. Um, you want to talk about ABS breaks? They're not magical. There's nothing magical about but ABS breaks. There I get it. Is, why, I get it. Comp- well, I get it why people are paranoid because breaking it. is probably the top priority. And so, the, you know, there's like some myths around ABS brakes. And so there's just a module that senses brake pressure. This is really just, you know, kind of in general that tells the, um, it Let, controls the braking system, right? Right. So all that module does is pulse, essentially pulse the brakes because if your car's sliding, you don't have control, but if your tires are rolling, then you can steer. So all ABS does is a lot. Keep the it keeps tires you on a straight line braking. So your back well, tire doesn't slide out. So you right? don't slide out right. and you can still steer. So on a motorcycle, you can still, um, the biggest thing for a motorcycle is your rear tire. And I've had that happen to me before. doesn't go into a lock and slide out. Right. Cause that's what motorcycle tires do in the rear. They lock up and then they want to slide one way or the other. And so guys riding dirt bikes capitalize on that and they learn to slide them a certain yes. way, but on the street, we don't want to do that. So the ABS just keeps the rear tire rolling by pulsing the brakes. Mm. It's not a, it, there's just nothing pulsing. magical about it. There's some pulsing and then the sliding, right? Oh, are we talking about the meter? So the meter, oh no, we're talking <laughs> about the brakes, nothing magical there. And no, and that's what I want to separate for the audience. Just understand your brake system on an ABS system has nothing, zero, nada to do with the fluid right. and the reservoirs. The fluid and the reservoirs on an ABS system are the same exact components that they use in regular non-ABS braking systems for the most part. It's it's lines, it's reservoirs, and it's fluid. The ABS doesn't have to do with that. Where you're so when you're changing your fluid or you're flushing your system and you're flushing it and 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 all that. It, you're not dealing with the ABS at all. You're, you're just pushing fluid through lines. You're just pushing, you're, you're through just through pushing lines. fluid. That's it. How the ABS works is you have magnetic sensors that are attached to your axles. They're actually a spacer like in your front wheel. And it's a magnetic sensor with electrical wires that run to a computer and it senses wheel speed and it senses the magnet senses um, wheel speed and then it senses if your tire's locking up. And so then it sends to the computer to tell the brakes to pulse. Right. But that, so when you're changing fluid or you're doing handlebar jobs, like we teach you guys how to do in our, in our uh, videos, um, in our premium videos, all our handlebar install videos. Yeah. You've got to, you've got to bleed brakes. You got to do all this, but bleeding brakes and flushing systems, it doesn't matter on the ABS system. That is a completely separate magnetic sensor and wires has nothing to do with the fluid or the reservoir. So I just want to cl- that clean that up. You have, yeah. That, and that's what we tell people on our emails right. that we constantly, you know, they're worried they get our handlebar videos and like, do you guys teach? I heard that if you, and this is the other, you're going to love this. No, you do not need to take your Harley to the dealership to no. have ABS systems bled. And it is a great, and I love, I have friends that work at dealerships. We're not dogging dealerships. They're told to say certain things. Of course, that's, big part of Harley Davidson, we've said it before, is servicing your bike. I have heard from so many people via email that Harley says that you have to take it to the dealership, that there's nobody in their garage that or shop that can properly bleed brakes because it's an ABS system and you have to have a computer and you have to have a special machine that cycles the the, the fluid through your system. I have heard this over Over, and over absolutely 100% false that was in it was in the letter i got how they how harley described to me in this letter that they had a special machine that only harley technicians have that for my abs brakes and i'm like it's just i'm just peeing fluid out right i don't need to recalibrate anything i don't need to access the computer nope i don't need to do anything but put all at what not push you could but all we did was suck fluid from one side to the other right that's it it's like sipping coke from a straw yep that's exactly. It. There's just nothing else to it. So yes, 
Right. And I, I'd like to know the basis for that. I'm sure there's some off deal there where they're like, well, if in some, you know, random situation, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know why they push that. And if I have heard and I've never had it happen and we've done tons of handlebar jobs, um, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash buy videos. If you want to see all our premium videos, um, we've done a ton of handlebar jobs around here and we've never thrown a code change in brake fluid or anything. If you did throw a code, it's no big deal. Just take it and get it cleared at the dealership or a lot of codes you can clear. If you have a, a fuel pack three EFI tuner, I can clear them right on my phone. You can also see what codes, but that's worst case, big deal. It throws a code, just go get it cleared. It, 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 but I've never had it throw a code and I've done a ton yeah, right. of brake bleeding and exchanges. So just be aware of that. But that would be the worst case scenario. So no, you, you, you don't need a special machine. So that's what we're going to, unless you have something else, I'm going to roll into what we used, our special. No. And you got, I mean, I'll be on the bike here in the next 45 minutes. So we'll know. Yep. <laughs> oh no. The yeah, brakes felt great. We are, in the you don't even need yeah. to ride it to feel them. No. Yeah. No, they're good. They're, they're solid. I think they're probably more solid than they were. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, you should be getting, and my fluid and mine tested over 4% too. Right, right. And uh, it was horrible. I, um, I'm a little embarrassed to even talk about this now, having done it, how easy it is that I did something that just totally blew my mind. Right. But like it slipped my mind. Like, Oh, it's something I mean, you forget about. Yeah, it really As long is. as you check your levels and you're like, yeah, it looks good. Um, it's probably fine and my brakes don't work, but it... Yeah, and I'm going to put this, I'm going to add this to our maintenance, premium maintenance videos, even though this particular portion will be free, I'll add it so people know. Yeah, right. You know, every two years, you know, do this um, just as a little bonus. But um, so here's what we suggest using. Now, uh, you can do it the old-fashioned way if you want, even though it's ABS. I would not suggest doing this way because it's old school and it's just way easier to get all the air out and flush a system. So I would I would encourage you to to invest a one time fee. Mm-hmm. Here's your here's your two choices. That's what happens when you get dollar store pins. <laughs> I did the caps fall off. That's the first time I've used it, the the clicker thing. That is perfect. Jeez, Louise. That is perfect. Um, so uh, here's the, here's what we suggest you get. Don't do it the old way. The old way is you take the bleeder screw. Um, you get a wrench on it and you have something to, you know, a little hose to, in a container and you have somebody standing up there at the reservoir and you pump the brake up and then you pull on it and you keep pressure. The guy at the bottom at the bleeder valve at your brake caliper opens at a quarter turn. The fluid comes pouring out. The guy up at the reservoir keeps the handle depressed because you don't want to let that handle up because if you let that handle up, you can introduce Sucker. air to the system, um, uh, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, and wait, and then he closes the valve. And as soon as he closes the valve, he gives you the nod. You let the brake handle out. You pump it up again until it gets pressure. You hold. He opens it. Bam. It falls back to the handlebar grip. You keep it held. And you do this over, or if it's the foot pedal, you do the same thing for the rear brake. It's an old way to do it. It's slow. It's clunky. If you do get air in your system, it's going to take forever to get the air out of your system. So here's our suggestion. I've got two options for you. Here at Law Abiding Biker Media, we own both of them. I will put links in the show notes, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash whatever show number this is. We'll get you there. And uh, um, and of course, when we put the video out, I'll put all these links, but we own both of these. Now it's called the, uh, and again, these are affiliate links. So by clicking through and, and if you guys do, if you please, if you're thinking about getting one of these after this episode, don't just go to Amazon and find it yourself. Please go to the show notes um, or uh, go to our affiliate banners page, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash banners, and you can hit the Amazon banner. And at least if you make a purchase and click through, we'll get a small commission um, and I'll have direct links, like I say in the show notes. So the Mighty Vac MV8000 automotive tune-up and brake bleeding kit it's a basically a, a pump handle with a gauge yeah. and we've used it for years until today. Mm -hmm. um, all of our handlebar videos, everything we were using a manual hand pump. It comes with all the lines. It comes with all the little brake bleeder screw adapters and elbows. It, it comes with the tubes. It comes with the container gauge, all that um, $42 um, on Amazon right now. And that's lasted me over 10 years and we've used it a ton. I just wash it out each time. So as low as $42, I got 10 years and however many brake bleeds out of that, that's unbelievable. And it works great. Now, if you want to go a little more expensive and you even want to do it faster, you use what we use today. And we got it just for this video. Um, and we're going to have it in the shop now, of course, and use it all the time. It's $143. It's the Mighty Vac MV6835 vacuum brake bleeding kit. It's made by Mighty Vac, of course. It has a container where you can quickly fill like a car reservoir. Um, we just had two of us. I stood above the reservoir and kept putting fluid in as, as uh, 
Oscar was down um, open in the bleeder screw. We'll talk a little more about that. Um, but basically this one's pneumatic yep. and you basically hook your air compressor hose into it and it creates a vacuum and it has the elbows and all the connections and you put it over the bleeder screw, you open it up and uh, it's good to go because it's a constant air and it sucks like a mother. Oh, it sucks. I used to have a girlfriend like that in oh, high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could fill her full oh, of air and turn I, a valve and she sucked. That was her nickname, the Mighty Vac. <laughs> <laughs> She was a specialist in fluid extraction. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, I just about spit my beer on that one. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, God, dude. One for you, dude. Oh, that was wow. money. That nice. was money. Um, the old Mighty Vac is awesome. It is. We are sold on it. And yeah. again, links in the show notes and go to our Amazon banner, please. And if you're going to get it, and it, this will have this thing around for years. It's got a much bigger reservoir. We bled two whole bike systems and it still was only like a quarter full. It's got a big bucket and uh, built very quality. Can't say enough about it. And you could use it for cars, automotive, all kinds of stuff, guys, not just motorcycles. One of the, for this one, one of the most popular uses is for um, push mowers. Cause you know, like your lawnmower, like my Honda little push mower guy, right? To drain the oil, you got to tip it on its side and then it runs down the side of the motor and it runs down the deck and it makes a mess. So the people are getting these cause it takes like 19 ounces of fluid. Right. So you just stuff it, you take you stuff that. it down the dipstick hole? No, you oh, just sorry, open sorry, the sorry. fill hole, the fill, just the regular oh, yeah, fill yeah, hole, yeah. and just you take that brass fitting, you know, the brass. Are you uh, talking about the engine oil? Yes. Sorry, so you're sucking the engine oil out? Uh, yes. Instead of draining it? Yes. Yeah, so the dipstick hole usually is the filler hole. On. Or, yeah, same thing. Right, uh, yeah, yeah. On my mower, it is on a John mine, Deere. I can't remember. Mine's not. And it's it, got either the way. dipstick on it. Okay. You can, yeah, you stuff it in there, suck it out. The generators, the small portable generators, are a pain in the ass to change. My, um, gas pressure washer is a pain in the ass that's a good idea so you can use this little what is it a two quart reservoir yeah i think so i think that's fair yeah that's pretty much good to go for all um small stuff generators power washers right. lawnmowers all that crap yeah so that's an and it added comes with use. the car thing it's got an auto filler you can put your brake uh, fluid in it turn it upside down it has a little clamp that clamps to your master cylinder and it will feed if you don't have two people yeah it will feed your master cylinder while you're down at the brakes uh, bleeding it. So, and that's an expensive job on a car. That's uh, like a three or right. four dollar job. So, you know, you pay one fifty, and you know, for watching our video and maybe a video too from Mighty Vac, you can save yourself quite a bit of money doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And that Mighty Vac, you're going to have, like I said, the hand pump one I had for ten years. Yeah. And I suspect this one to last, and we've done a lot of a lot of bikes with it. So, awesome. and you can get parts for them. You're right. Yeah. Exactly. Are you searching? Yeah. For the easiest and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle, Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap your paint. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attach strapless luggage rack systems. Rick Rack, this father son team, designed something really special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep. And these guys ride so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack Quick Attach System is strong, durable, and secure with a lockable system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your Quick Attach System. Once you use Rick Rack, you'll never go back. Rick Rack! What are you waiting for, bikeaholics? Head over to lawbuddingbiker.com forward slash store. That's right. Check out our full line of Rick Rack systems and bags. And you just got, I, I gave, just full set. I'm, I'm going to be ready to go here shortly. You're taking your Rick rack. I gave Oscar cause I used, I got a bunch of Rick rack stuff to make our videos. They're all on our YouTube channel, guys. Check out our YouTube channel and, uh, um, full review and install on those. And this mm -hmm. was one of the bags that was used in the video. And mm -hmm. I, of course, Oscar, I get a lot of parts around here. We get a lot of ton of parts and things. And I, uh, try to dish them out and yeah. to Oscar and stuff. And he gets a brand new Rick rack bag. And awesome. He's going to put it on top of his trunk. So yes. the, luggage rack on your trunk you'll strap it to that and it gives you a double ton of the storage. storage yeah ton of storage it's awesome i can't yeah. wait to set it up probably go home and set it up today that's awesome dude. yeah yeah that's awesome so all right let's get back into our uh subject matter here and that is uh, uh bleeding the brake system so we've talked about the moisture tester mm -hmm. we've talked about two options for the brake and we highly suggest Again, not going the old school way. Right. Um, I know it's 43 bucks and, uh, you know, but think of how long you're going to have that. And then, you know, e e even if it's 50 bucks, you know, have your buddies over and throw, you know, for using it, throw a yeah. five or something. You know, I get it. My money gets tight and, you know, all these different tools can get expensive, but that's one that I definitely think uh, uh, you'll get multi-use out of it. And yes. uh, again, they're not cheap because uh, uh, I've tested them and they don't break. Yeah, I've, I'm expected that other one, that hand pump one, to go out. And the hand pump one, it's gonna, it just takes a little more time. 
I can't it, believe it makes how your fast right the, forearm super huge. Oh, it does. I mean, yeah. so you got to use left and right handed. With right, that because yours you was don't already wanna, huge. But, oh yeah, well, right. I, my sex life got better, but it's um, you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you dude. don't want to have a big right forearm and a little tiny left one. True. So just switch back and switch forth. Back yeah, and forth, for your yes. health. It's important for you. You're doing a lot of bikes, <laughs> but this is a really quick job. So why don't you? I've been doing a lot of talking. Why don't you? Now that we've got our tools, what are they going to need for this? We've you're going to you don't necessarily need the moisture tester. We're just telling you yeah. about that. But it's nice it to have. Cool. Yeah. If you're going to replace it every two years, just replace it. You'll be fine, regardless of where you ride. Um, you'll need the mighty vac or the pump and what else? And some fluid and mm -hmm. an, and a a rotato chip buddy to come over mm -hmm. it's nice and to have a partner yeah you will need a couple box and wrenches yes uh, you'll we'll need a third a 12 millimeter on harley brakes it was a 12, no the 10 10 10 sorry yeah the 13 was a different project oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice 10 dude. millimeter yeah for the brake bleed screws which are down now um yeah and then some rags and yes. and uh, and your your special harley davidson protective cover for your gas tank i.e yes blanket uh, or use t-shirt or use t-shirt like we use yeah whatever you're not embarrassed to have over the tank because you don't want to get dot for it does take off paint guys dot floor is yeah. very harsh and so you don't want to get it on your tank if you did get something just clean it really good of course bug slide is what we would suggest actually it says uh water wash it off rinse it off first and then wipe it off. I was reading the back oh, of yeah, the label. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And also don't drink. Oh, we don't know if you're not oh, supposed Jesus to drink it. Christ. Well, come on. We have to talk about this. It can upset your Because uh, in the Harley manual, it very clearly says it. it is, what did it say? Shit. Uh, it is bad for your digestive system. Upsetting to your digestive system. All right, yeah. So I guess if you're having a but drink we, right. and, or like you have a beer and brake fluid, and well, beer in one hand and brake fluid and you're like, oh, which one's which? And you drink the brake fluid. It will, it'll make you, we're not sure if it'll kill you. I don't think but so. But it'll just make your <laughs> a digestive system. I wouldn't system. suggest drinking it, honestly. No, I don't think you should. No, don't drink it. Just Wait, drink uh, your water or whatever. Instead. Our suggestion. <laughs> Why is that in there? I don't know. Really? And I, you, but you didn't read what's I didn't, the prelude to it. Like, I got totally distracted by it. Correct. It said bad for your digestive system. Like that stuck out in big, bold letters. I'm like, holy shit. You don't say. Really? You know what I mean? Don't you drink don't, brake fluid? You don't say that oh. it's bad for my stomach. Because I had some on the rocks. It takes pain off a fucking motorcycle. <laughs> oh, what, imagine what it does to your intestines. With a Jesus. boiling point of 500 degrees or whatever. It must be great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's listen. like a teaspoon of coconut oil. You'll be fine. Now You're I got to read what led up to that I know. at some well, point, dude. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I got off track. I, I couldn't right. stop. We're, we're good, so you need the mighty back or, and there's, so the mighty back or the hand pumps or the pneumatic, whatever. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pneumatic hand and some fluid. And, uh, and then if you have a partner that helps, we were talking about how we could with the mighty vac was so handy that you could, I'm a I'm six two, so I'm a little bit taller. It's, so we were, I was kind of theorizing how, I, if I was going to do it by myself, it would be a little sketchy because the, I don't want to spill the brake fluid everywhere, but right. you could operate the mighty vac in I've one hand. It. I've done it. And pour in the other. Yep. So you could stand. It's up got by the long enough hoses, but yes. then you can't get down to tighten your screw, and the, it can be messy. It can, and be. then the 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 bleeder screw, you know, fitment of the hose pops off. It, it's a pain, but you could do it. You don't want to suck the reservoir dry, is the problem, guys? Because now <laughs> you're really gonna, <laughs> you, you know, not like my old girlfriend. You don't want to suck it dry because <laughs> she was more than a two quart uh, right. reservoir. <laughs> she, she, Oh, geez. Um, she, because, because you're going to introduce air back into your system. The other thing I wanted to say before we move on, Oscar, just as we're bringing up points, I want you guys to understand that a brake bleed is the same as a brake fluid ex exchange. If you're flushing your system, there's absolutely no difference with one, with one exception. And that is with a regular brake bleed, let's say you're just going to bleed some air out of your brake because they're getting spongy or you did a handlebar job, but you still have fluid or whatever in your reservoir. You want to get the air out of those lines because you've taken them off at some point. So all you got to do is take your 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 reservoir cap off, get your pump, get down there at the bleeder screw, you, and, and all you're going to do is add fluid to your existing fluid, and you're going to work the air out. We're going to talk more in depth about this. Um, with, so it's the same process with a complete brake fluid extraction like we did where we're going to replace it with all new fluid. It's the same process. You're just going to... Um, empty and suck dry. Yes, I said it. You're going to suck dry with the Mighty Vac, your reservoir. So the first thing you're going to do, and we'll talk a little more about this, is suck it dry. And then you'll put new fluid in and you'll go from there because you're completely exchanging your fluid. So does that make sense? If you're just doing a brake bleed, you may just need to bleed some out and add a little extra fluid. You're mixing it with your old fluid. 
with a brake line extraction, complete replacement like we're talking about today, it's the same thing aside from we're going to empty that reservoir. Yeah, right. Um, so with that said, uh, I think that's all the tools. Why don't you um, go through the process of what's the best way to do it? Can I explain it. Let's let's talk about a yeah. complete brake fluid extraction, go through the process of, of how we did that together. I, yeah, and it was pretty effective. So, I mean, so we you'll see in the video, we removed the um, reservoir cap. And Which just, for your front brakes is up on your right up on handlebar. The handlebars mm-hmm. and for the foot brakes down by the foot pedal or for the rear brakes is down by the foot pedal. Um, and then you just, you know, we pay attention. We show you in the video to pay attention to the diaphragm, um, setting the lid down face down. So the mm-hmm. diaphragm is face down on a clean surface. Mm-hmm. Make right. sure you clean all these components guys before yes. it seriously get before the road and gr- after before and after you do not want to get road grime nope. or dirt into those systems, man. That's a, that's a no, no. And I rode over in the rain, the pouring rain this morning. So the bike was, my bike was totally soaked. Mm-hmm. And so I, I spent, you know, 20 minutes drying all the area around um, both reservoirs because we don't want any you know, in that water, especially in rain, there's grit and stuff. We don't want that to drip in there. So take the time to clean it off, make sure it's dry so nothing drips in there. We just use the Mighty Vac uh, with the elbow on it, the adapter, the brake bleed screw adapter is what mm-hmm. it's technically called. The sucking in. The sucking in. Right. right. Always look for that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't even know where to go. With that. I'm <laughs> just, just going to let that go. We just need to move on right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we just, <laughs> we just <laughs> stuck it in and sucked it all out yep i mean just and it like does that. it has I, I we can go way off track I, i'm yeah. just gonna say it and we're gonna stop joking about it, <laughs> it actually the mighty vac sucks really good <laughs> and it does it because it we does. got in there we were surprised it has a lot of sucking power yes and it will really dry that reservoir out now this is before we've opened the bleeder valve or right. anything yes here. and so you're getting that dry you're sucking out all the the juice and it makes sense because you're taking the <laughs> just keep going <laughs> no, quit it we're going to, this is going to go for three hours. Okay. We're so children. We, I know. So hey, we just, um, we just took the, the crappy fluid off the top right. instead of forcing it all the way through the system. You could just go yeah, to the bottom could. and open the bleeder screw and, and get everything out from the bottom. But why do that? Why not suck some of the stuff off yep. the top? So you don't have to run it all through your lines. Exactly. Yep. So that's all we did it was we took it off the top and we drained the reservoir. Um, and you might notice when you take it off, yours is going to look a honey colored right. or possibly a black. If it's black, it's because your brake lines can break down over time. If you've waited that long, then it's a long time. Um, but ours both looked a really a honey color. A honey co- that's like a, a good way a to describe honey, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Uh, and and then, normal brake fluid is perfectly clear, clear. Like water. So when we poured, so we suck the reservoir dry and then pour brand new fluid on top because then we're going to start taking it from the brake bleeder screw. And so it is it's totally clear. It's even hard. So when I was down there with the brake bleed screw open. And talk it, about that. It's got a little plastic cap. Make sure yep. it's clean. Yes. It's got a little 10 millimeter nut on it. And yep. uh, and it, you can just turn it like, you know, a half turn. Half turn. You'll know by the mighty vac and the hose how yep. good a suction you're getting and the right. fluid coming out of it, right? Yes. Yeah, it was pretty easy to see. I mean, it was helpful to have you up there to say, hey, this is how much we've gone through or whatever. But um, I could see the fluid coming through. There was a definite color change where the honey was, the honey color was gone and then it's clear. And I'm like, okay, we're into the new fluid. <clears throat> and so it was pretty simple. Um, that rubber cap is tough to get off, but just keep it clean. So pull the rubber cap off. Uh, I put the Mighty Vac adapter on. When we were ready, we broke open the brake bleeder screw. And the cool thing that, that Mighty Vac was really impressed that the control valve is right on top. And it's super easy to use. So I wasn't down it's just there. just a little handle you push forward it, and back and it, it stays. It but you know, there's dials or there's there, there's um, 90 degree levers and all yep. kinds of stuff that stick. It was super easy to use and even fine adjustments. So I could just kind of flick it forward slowly with my thumb until we got enough uh, pressure that we, it, there was really no right or wrong. It was just kind of a, we were just checking it out and there was a wide range of where you could suck it down really fast or you could slow down a little bit. If you were doing it by yourself, maybe you go a little slower. We could we have had our air compressor set at about not. I want to jump in. Yeah, one hundred and ten psi. You can set it. Mighty Vac says anywhere between well, eighty and sixty and one sixty and one fifty or something. So we yeah. were like one hundred and ten, which is where my air compressor usually sits. That's the main compressor, not the outlet valve. I dial those, but it was it was probably pumping out a hundred. And uh, yeah, he says it has an adjustable handle on there, and you just set it to where you want, how fast you want the fluid to suck out. And with me up there, um, you can go pretty much wide open depends yep. how far you open your bleeder valve to open it good so you get a good flow going through there right and uh the guy up top um up at the reservoir me i was just making sure it stayed filled because if you run it dry 
you've now introduced air to your system and you get to start all over. You got to start all over. Yeah, put more fluid in, it, but you can do it. If you did do that, it's not the end of the world. Don't freak out. It's it's easy to get the air out of these systems. It's just, super easy. Just you run pour more it in fluid. Suck more in. Yep. You're going to waste more fluid is yes, all. That's all it is. And with that Mighty Vac, was, I wasn't even worried about it. Because you know, like a lot of our, our audience, people out there, you freak out about breaks. But I'm like, right. with this thing, it's, oh, whoops, we went dry. Oh, let's just dump more in and start You got another over. bottle of fluid. Yeah. yeah, and it'll take another two minutes. I mean, it really yeah. went. Your bike, did we do your whole bike in... Oh, without like filming, without yeah. filming, if you wanted to do your whole brake system on your bike, if you had all the tools set out, half hour, half hour max, and you had a, a partner half hour max, that's with bullshit and drinking a beer while yeah, you're doing it. Right. Yeah. It, I, it was really fast. So yeah, don't, awesome. don't have a dealership do this guys. I'm telling you, it's, it's not worth it's it. It's safe and you can do it. Um, it'll be fine. That's, I mean, that's really it. The well, other, that was it. The other thing I wanted to mention, I'm making notes as we go is, uh, make sure that you suck out enough fluid. And again, the hoses are clear on the Mighty Vac, so he could see when it turned from um, the the honey color to the clear. But I still say at least put two reservoirs. We did three because fluid is cheap. It's like three six bucks for that, and you're um, not going to save it. So you're not going to save don't it. Use that half of that twelve. If you only use six ounces, the other six ounces it says clearly on the label. Throw it away after a week. But a lot of people keep it because they don't yeah. know that, right? So, so let's get that out there. Why? If you open a bottle and you break the seal, why don't you put that back on your shelf with all your fluids? And you might need to top off when you do your next service. Already absorbing water. Correct. It's already pulling moisture out of the air. You've introduced it by opening the cap. Yep. And so um, apparently- So you got to th- So please guys, don't save brake fluid on- If I see brake fluid open- Just throw yeah, it away. Just throw it away because yeah. it's it, you're, now you're putting bad moisture-filled fluid back into your brake system. And it has no other value for anything else. Right. It's not like you can, you know, lubricate your hand. You can't it drink. It just causes digestive oh, problems. Oh, that's right. That's but, right. So if you don't have any probiotics, you might maybe a tablespoon right. of brake fluid's great. <laughs> um, no, don't drink the brake fluid. Mm-hmm. Just don't drink it. Just don't. don't drink any automotive fluid. Just say no. The yeah. other thing I want to bring up is uh, now your front system, guys, on your brakes, depending on which model motorcycle you have, we're talking touring here. Um, we did a, a Ultra and a Street Glide. But you want to make sure and bleed your left caliper first because it's farthest away from your right. reservoir, which sits up on your right handlebar. Um, that's just the system they say to use because the line's longer. You want to bleed that first up into the reservoir and then go ahead and go for your right one, which is a little bit shorter. And uh, that way you make sure and get the air completely out of that system. That's what everybody recommends. Um, I can't explain it any further than that, but it makes I, yeah, sense. Sure. Do your yeah. longest line first and then your shortest line. Of course, on your rear, your brake reservoir is down by your brake pedal for the most part. Um, and it sits down there and there's only one caliper, one brake on your rear. So it goes even faster. You'll have to remove your saddlebag, but it is the same exact um, bleed process. Let's do this. And then it's actually uh, easier because it's right on top. Yeah, the true. bleed screw is right on top. So and the reservoir is level. So right. it's easier to get through because uh, up on your handlebars. Let's talk about that level. Level oh, bike. Yes, talk about we... that in a second. Hey, bike holic, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products. Zero 3D has just what you're looking for. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Hardy Davidson motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome lighting and comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. That equals less time installing, more time riding. Zero 3D has a design team with over 40 years' experience with a passion for design and innovation. These guys are bikers and care about bikers just like you. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email sales at zero 3D.com or give them a call. 715-808-0027. Zero 3D is distributed in the U.S. by Drag Specialties, in Europe by Parts Europe and Zodiac, and in Asia by Twin Art. Check at your local dealership and ask for zero parts. Better yet, help support us right here. Head over to lawbindingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Mm-hmm, right there. And that's how it's done. Mm-hmm. Love our sponsors, guys. Love our sponsors. All right. So uh, what else are we talking about? Oh, and the the... Let's talk about, yeah, the, the back one's easy because it sits, the thing about your reservoir is you guys are going to find, yeah. depending on if you've done aftermarket handlebars versus stock, your aftermarket bars, which sits upright, was actually better positioned than my stock handlebars yeah, for right. the reservoir. Right. What we mean by that is if your bars are cocked back or cocked forward, depending on how high, your reservoir is not going to sit level. You did say cocked. I said cocked twice. several times. And uh, we're talking about all kinds of craziness here. Oh, so depending on the position of those, um, you know, it's going to be a little bit harder to get fluid. So a lot of times the brake job on a lift is is not beneficial. You might do it on the kickstand if that tends to level your bike out more. With Oscars, we did it on the kickstand. We did mine on the lift, but we really had to cock my bike. I said it Side to the to left side. or, you know, to so that we could try to level the fluid. You're not going to get it perfectly level, 
But if you can see that when you fill your reservoir, that if you did level your bike, it's going to, it's going to meet the full mark in the sight glass, which is how I had to do it. I eyeballed it. It's not a hundred percent critical. Just get it close to the level that it's supposed to be. Um, and, and you're going to be fine. And of course, another point I want to bring up is that as your brakes wear, you'll need more fluid. Your fluid's going to go down. There should be enough in there, Yeah. but you know, it's going to go down drastically. And, and so, because your pads are squeezing in on the rotors and thus it needs more fluid to push the pistons in and all that kind of stuff. So just understand that, that, that component to, um, to brake system. So, uh, yeah. Or LD doesn't use brakes. So that's cool too, because that <laughs> right. saves them a lot of money in the long run. Mm. I, I really was, uh, I, you know, I had not had done a lot of brake stuff. I'd read a little bit, but um, I was really uh, impressed with how easy it was. And it is. It's something sometimes we get a little OCD about, you know, we get a little freaked out about, but it was super easy. I'm glad you brought it up. If guys that haven't done it before, yeah, you know, I, I get it. It can, if you don't know, and that's what we're here for, guys, Law Abiding Biker Media. That's why we're going exactly. five years strong is uh, that's why, you know, the community appreciates what we do so much is we're getting this information out there. And if you've never wrenched on a bike, you know, and stuff like that, um, the, the, that's the greatest part about this is uh, getting you guys in with the videos. That will be helpful. This is a podcast. It'll be much more visual. Right. Um, but I think we gave a pretty good picture of how to do it. Um, yeah, a lot of guys so. could do it right off the podcast. There's no real cautions I can give you, except just make sure you bleed them good. Oh, let's, we didn't talk about this. So let, let's talk about after, so let's talk about the front. So after you bleed it, you get all your fluid out, you, you extract it. And when I mean bleeding, I mean, change your fluid. Okay. All the air is out of the line. One of the things you can see down at the mighty vac is let's talk about, um, air and then lever feel. Those are the things I want to talk about. So, oh, right. um, the air bubbles, you can talk about that. We're not worried about your, uh, talk about the little fine ones versus the big bubbles, what they're looking for to make sure that like air, right you at, want a visual combination right at, the, at the line. So right when we started like us, I, I don't know why it was more noticeable on the rear for both bikes, but for whatever reason, um, when we first, when I first turned the vacuum on, <coughs> there was huge um, bubbles in the fluid coming out. And I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. Um, as we got the old fluid out, the bubbles went away. And as the new fluid started cycling in, the bubbles got really tiny because there's not a perfect vacuum on where the Mighty Vac adapter meets the screw. It's sucking air around it a little it's bit. It's getting just a little bit of air, but most of that's going right. They're in. micro, I call them micro bubbles. Oh, those are like little bubbles. Little bubbles. Oh, good mini word. Micro micro, bubbles. Mini micro bubbles. Yeah. That's a double negative. And they're, they're super really small. You guys will see. You can't, yeah, they're tough to see. But so you're looking, you're looking for, to make sure the air, let's bring it back, to make sure the air is out of your line. If you want a visual, you're just looking for the big, large bubbles. That's air in your system. The micro fine bubbles is air sucking around. Yeah. The, the, and that's the going into the mighty vac reservoir anyway correct not, you're not remember we're we are um pulling fluid through so by the time you see it i i was seeing it in the mighty vac tube mm -hmm. the air was coming out already right so the big bubbles a little bit of air right off the top and then probably from when i put the the adapter on there right um but yep it went away it was very obvious you'll get a good away. solid flow of clear fluid with nothing but some very micro bubbles mm -hmm. on the outside of the yeah. line going through you'll see them they're very so if you're expecting to get rid of all micro bubbles, that's never going to happen because you're sucking air around the fitting. And so. it was, so when it's, it's, if you think about it, like, um, water pouring down a slide, like a water slide, that's not, it, it, when we got brand new fluid had finally gone all the way through the system, it was tough to see. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a, a, you know, water going through a straw. It just, I could see movement in the tube. Right. But that's how I'd know we'd finally gotten all brand new fluid because it was so clear and flowing so well. That, that you, it, it looks like nothing's see. flowing, right? It, exact, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It looks like nothing's flowing, but it was kind of collecting in the in the um, middle of the tube, so I knew it was moving through there still. Right. Right. Good call. Good call. And the mighty vac. Yep. And that big container, just such a clean, makes it such a clean oh, operation. Then you can awesome. just yep. uh, unscrew the mighty vac later, the cap from it, and uh, you can just pour it into a, wherever you dispose of your brake fluid. I put it in a big thing of old motor oil and stuff. Um, and it just makes it a very, very clean operation. And then, uh, like I said, it's lasted 10 years, the hand pump, when I just clean them up with soap and water after each time and put them away till the next use. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I want to talk about uh, that I have on my notes here is lever feel. So when you get done bleeding, bleeding your front brakes, both left and right side, if you have dual front brakes, um, and again, this will work on any model, not just touring. This is all motorcycles for the most part. Um, they're all the same systems. Uh, 
you want to put your cap on and we didn't screw it in right away, but you do, when you start pulling that lever to test it, the brake, um, it could shoot some back up out of the reservoir. So just put the cap over and hold it tight so that you just make sure nothing splashes back out. And, uh, the reason I don't want to screw it down yet is that maybe we have to bleed them a little more if we feel spongy, but what you're going to feel on that front brake is it's going to go really easy all the way to the handlebar. And as you pump it four times is about what I felt. Bam. It got all of a sudden really hard, really stiff. It only took I mean, four <laughs> squeezes <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was all. So, um, well, Hey, Oh, some we're, children. We're podcasting. What, I, I know what they want. We're going to digress. You guys will find this funny, the audience, because you guys want to ride up the hoist and the basket. Oh, it's right. So do I. But I'll have to do it after our podcast. So my little girl's here. How old are you? Nine? I know. I'm just teasing. <laughs> so I got my daughter and her friend here, and it, over we're in a, a room off to the side here trying to do this podcast in a very temporary location, but there's a hoist that hoist stuff up into the storage room above the new law abiding biker shop. And it has a wood crate where we haul heavy stuff up to the bonus room, basically above to get stuff up there. And they like to ride in it. They did it last <laughs> night for the first time. I will after the podcast. I love you. Oh, another 45 minutes by the time I available to do that. At least four days. What? You can look, but don't go play around in there. All right. So back to, sorry about that. I kind of want to ride in the hoist too. That's what happens when you podcast around law abiding biker media. You just have your kids come into the room, but I think our audience knows that's, we're real. Yeah. Yeah. We got real life and real family and all that stuff behind the scenes. So, so about four and uh, squeezes. Yes. And it does. And you'll feel it get really stiff and uh, don't be scared. When I was 15. Right. The first time that happened when I was a kid, it's a little scary at first, but it's exciting at the same time. And then uh, um, once you do that, uh, you know, you're still going to, a lot of guys worry about the brake feel. You're still going to have about a quarter inch, some play, some play. You're uh, going to yeah, have about whatever. a quarter inch. It shouldn't like, it should come in a little bit. That's how you feel squeezing your brake. So, um, what you should do is feel it before, and then you won't freak out after feel what it feels like before. And you'll realize after, oh yeah, that's exactly how it's supposed to be. It's about a quarter inch of play, walk around to another bike, whatever. You'll know if it's spongy though, it'll come in halfway or you'll, you'll know right away. So and there's should, no, um, there's no uh, power assist. So it's not like you turn the bike on and all of a sudden the system will pressurize. Right. It is how it is the whole time. So Correct. that's why you can check the brakes just after you're done. Just squeeze the lever. And nice, nice. So and cars have some cars have brake boosts and stuff. So true. They, they pressurize when there's power. Good point. So you yep. won't need that. There. You, you won't need that. Um, yep, get that feel. And then with your foot pedal for your rear brake, same thing. Mm-hmm. Pump it a few times and uh, it'll start, it'll get real hard and, and uh, uh, too. And you'll, uh, there's no other words for it. It'll oh, get come stiff on. Firm. Firm. Oh, you're yeah. right. Thank you. you. Firm feel. It'll get firm. And then uh, then you're, you're good from there. And you'll know uh, that you got good brakes. And of course, the ride will be the total test. But you'll know, I know I've done so many brakes now. You'll go out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll know if they're spongy in the garage. They, yeah. They're, they're not going to lie to you. Yep. And uh, if you did do the, you know, where you grabbed it and it was spongy still. It's very, very simple. Um, just go back, take your cap off and run some more fluid through till you get all the air out. You, right. you maybe missed a couple bubbles. Make sure you have a good seal and don't let your reservoir run dry and uh, make sure to top it off and then uh, uh, seal your reservoir. Uh, put your cap back on they'll um, be, yeah, with the two be screws, basically. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Read, not all bikes use dot four, so make sure you're the different years read what dot level. It's very important that you do that. And a lot of times on top of your brake reservoirs, it tells you there's a warning sticker there that tells you um, what fluids to use and, and all that kind of stuff. So just be aware of that. Um, other than that, literally, guys, you could have your front rear um, uh, bled in, like we say, 30 minutes. Awesome. We Real quick, and I know you got to go. Um, the only other thing is we also did my hydraulic clutch Yeah, that was and it. guys, cause there's not a whole podcast on this with yeah. your hydraulic clutch. It's the same exact process. If you want to find your bleeder valve for your hydraulic clutch, it's over on the right side. If you have a model with a hydraulic clutch, like my 14 and all the new models are going to have it over on your right side, there's two bolts that take off your side transmission cover on old bikes with cable clutches that actually held fluid. It's part of your transmission. You'll dump fluid all over you wouldn't need to do that because you don't need to bleed cable clutches underneath that side transmission cover. It's just decorative two screws and there's your bleeder valve for your hydraulic. And it's a little bit smaller it, quarter, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch wrench. And you go through and it's only one line 
and you go through the same exact process. Your le- your reservoir is up on your left handlebar. It's dot four fluid in my case. You go through the same exact process, except at the end, your clutch will not get stiff because a clutch needs to pull in. How did it feel to you? It started out loose though, right? The clutch handle, I know we can keep going. Um, the clutch, you, yes, it, yes. it's going to be loose at first, but it will there stiffen some, up and feel like a normal there clutch. There was some, yep, it was, it was soft and then there was some tension. I, I, I grabbed the handle three or four times. And I noticed a little bit of pressure building each time until the fourth or fifth time. I was like, okay, there's, there's solid tension there. So right. you can always, um, you know, you know, you'll know this ahead of time, right? Grab the clutch and, and see how it feels and then do the, the job and then be done and compare the same, you know, or whatever. Um, or you can get a little spring and do uh, amount of tension and all that good stuff. But yeah, the, so one notation here that mm-hmm. uh, what we found is the brakes were honey colored, used fluid was honey. When we got into the clutch, it was a, I'm going to just say metallic, metallic gray. Mm-hmm. It looked like, um, like the flakes that come off of, or it kind of looks like when you drain your primary and you have a little bit of metal on the magnet or whatever, mm-hmm. that's kind of what it looked like. Yep. I don't know. I, and I can't explain it. Right. I have no idea why it's that color, but it is. It's apparently normal. I mean, obviously you, you right. don't do anything fancy to your bike. So no. if you see that, don't be alarmed and just flush it thing. out, get rid of it. Yeah. Flush it out like we did. Yep. And obviously should have something we should have done a while ago because that fluid was nasty. All yeah. The clutch fluid was nasty. And uh, the brake fluid was nasty. The brake fluid was nasty. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm telling you, that uh, fun. That was a fun day. I was. really enjoyed that. Both of our bikes are done. Thanks for sticking it out with yeah, me. I know he's got to go. But uh, that's right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Hope it was informational. Look forward to the YouTube videos coming out. I can't give you a timeline on that because I got to get them an edit and all that. They might not even be out by the time this podcast airs, but uh, we'll see. Nonetheless, just make sure you're subscribed so you get notifications. Hit that bell icon on our YouTube channel and uh, that bell icon next to the subscribe button so you're notified when the new videos pop. And we went live this morning. We did a quick live YouTube yeah, live. Yeah, the shop. Partially in the new studio, the new shop. But uh, like I said, we had a long ways to go before we are completely moved in. But don't get stranded, Bikeaholics. You get hooked up with our cruise tools, RTH3 roll-up travel toolkit for Hardy-Davidson and American-made V-Twin motorcycles. Why get stranded and have your bike towed over a small repair? This quality-made toolkit has everything you need for a roadside emergency repair. Tested and used by the Law Bunny Biker Crew. Yep, it's our, it's our stamp of approval. Get it already. That's the Cruise Tools RTH3 kit. We bought it right to the lot. We brought it right to the Law Bunny Biker store just for you guys. LawBunnyBiker.com forward slash store. Nothing but five star reviews. Big Daddy Kane and Grunt. That's right, Goat. I think they changed his nickname to Goat. Yeah, Run yeah. the Law Bunny Biker store. Have them in stock. We do really have a ton in stock ready to ship to you guys right this very moment all right thanks awesome. brother it's been a great day thanks for having me mm-hmm. thanks pablo calcerata for the music was awesome oh yeah the the old outro song here i like it i like it a lot all right guys we're out of here peace peace